All right, the long-awaited effects video. Now we will cover more parasites for the first bit of this video, but afterwards we'll go over the known effects in this mod. Furthermore, if any of you would like to like and subscribe, that would be greatly appreciated. See you in the lab. Yeah, also, in the last series of tests we posted, we had someone claim that they beat the Parasite mod by simply waiting it out until it went back to just Muglin's Eruptors. Now that is a very bold claim given the huge lack of evidence. Moving on. Okay, we have these things that resemble floating ball sacks that approach you at the pace of a nice brisk jog. Upon making contact with you, they will explode into a series of parasite spawns and particle effects while also dealing a decent amount of damage to you. Note here the absolutely massive amount of yellow eyes and ruptures that tend to spawn upon exploding. Such a lovely friend to have along your parasitical adventures. Now the best way to combat these things is range. A bow, a gun, a crossbow, whatever you need to kill them and prevent anything from spawning upon death. Cause they are a hassle to deal with. It's time to talk about the flying carriers. These things know the definition of teabagging, but they don't seem to want to tell us. They'd rather show us instead. Good luck finding out how they managed to fly with those tiny ass flaps, too. Fighting these guys is like fighting a moose. They move fast as shit, but they don't turn worth a damn. Aside from that, they do pretty much the same thing as heavy carriers, except they can fly now, and they mainly seem to spawn ruptures. No yellow eyes here, and thank god for that. They also seem to be just a decent bit faster than the heavy carrier. Here we go, the beginning of the end, when the vigilante starts spawning a lot of other things on this list will start spawning as well. Good luck dealing with this thing or its friends. This thing has a series of poisonous and corrosive projectiles that it will typically use to butcher you from a range. And can spawn Caesars. Oh boy, Death Wave boys, my favorite. Also, the flying man is back. Yeah, the Kyphosis here is essentially the elite guard of the Stage 3 Beckons and Dispatchers. They have a fair amount of health and do good melee damage. The biggest threat, though, comes from their infamous Death Wave. We love those, don't we? Here we go, the Sentry. We already know a good bit of what this does generally. It stands, guarding a spot, with its ranged attack but there is something very special about it. Each of these little acid balls tear down your armor like tissue paper. As you can see, our test subject has lost his armor immediately. We'll go into detail about these special effects behind this attack later. Erecting a dispenser. Now this thing, the Caesar, will grab you from a far distance and hold you in the same spot as long as it's alive. Yeah, these things will primarily spawn around beckons and dispatchers, or at least within the vicinity of one of those. There doesn't seem to be any sort of grabbing animation, so feasibly they must be using the force to pull you in or some shit. Yoda, is that you? Oh god! My god! metaphorians are acting up again! This thing. Now before we go into more detail about the Overseer, we just like to mention the fact that in this mod's own arsenal, all you have for range is a bow to fight this thing. A very strong bow, but literally just a bow. Mind you, this is an incredibly tanky and fairly fast moving long range opponent that will rain down powerful projectiles. It's basically the sniper of the parasites. The bow is basically the longest range attacks of any parasite form. They even outrange all of the tech gun mods turrets Except for the sniper variant. Except the assimilated Enderman! That stupid thing can teleport anywhere with anything! Alright, the Warden. As you can see, this is essentially just a better version of the Long Arms. Boasting many death waves, launching you high into the air, and quick step. It is still plenty killable as long as you don't let it reach you, but if you do, you'll likely be turned into a pile of meat in a matter of seconds. So, similar to the Overseer, this thing flies, but has a very flawed way of fighting. It has a good amount of health and does fair damage with the bombs it drops. However, 
it drops bombs very slowly to the point where sometimes it goes to touch the ground to drop them. Yeah, these things can still kill you if you forget about them, but as long as you keep them in your sights, you should generally be fine in a fight. Yeah, I mean, if you're getting swarmed, you're, these things probably aren't the thing to kill you overall. I mean, look at him. He's walking backwards, and it's not getting hit. Mm -hmm. It's kind of sad, honestly. It really is. Of all the adapted forms of Parasite, this made it. This is the Michael Jackson of the Parasite universe. It can absolutely bust a move. Side note here, this version of Michael Jackson does not involve him touching any children unless it revolves around murdering them horribly. Boasting amazing health, quick step, and a Hulk jump, this thing will absolutely clap your cheeks if you attempt to stop it from boogieing. Jimmy, grab the footage of him boogieing. Do it now. Here we go. We got the unholy bastard child of a scorpion and a spider. It shoots webs at its target, but usually to not any great effect. As you can see here, it has a fair amount of melee damage, okay health, and can be a threat. It will most likely not be a threat to you, but it's still another body for the horde approaching on your location at every waking moment outside of your obsidian cubicle. Or pocket dimension. Don't forget about the pocket dimension. We love those. The Grunt. These guys are aptly named. Like an endless flock of seagulls, they don't like leaving you alone. They're just a smaller version of the Marauder. Very little health, only decent damage, and have amazing quick step abilities and agility. These things also spawn in viral and bleeding forms to continue adding to the headache. With all this in mind, these guys will kick you in the dick the second you turn around to face them. And if you try to run away. Okay, okay, now is the time. As promised before, we will now take the time to go over the various status effects this mod has to offer. There are 13 different varieties ranging from bleeding, to exhaustion, to viral. Status effects, such as these combined with the GigaChad hordes of the enemies, render this mod nearly impossible without spending incalculable amount of time milking cows. Oh, and by the way, milk doesn't even work on all these effects. Only some of them. First on the list is bleeding. Pretty self-explanatory. Bleeding will drain your health slowly over time and make it far more difficult to compensate with regenerative effects. Specifically, it will drain 2% of your health per second. Unless, of course, you're moving in which it will be double to 4% per second. Bleeding may not be cured using milk and it cannot do more than 50 hearts of damage per infliction. Well, thank god, that puts me in a state of blissful relief knowing that uh, you can only die about several times over from bleeding, instead of infinitely many times over. Bleeding can be inflicted by any of the bleeding variants of enemies. However, it can also be inflicted by default by assimilated humans, villagers, and endermen. On the survivor side of things, the player can inflict bleeding damage onto a parasite by hitting it in its weak point, or hitting it with a living sword. Alright, cauterize this wound and on to the next effect. Alright, now as we're walking out to the bar, let's talk about fear. Now what fear does is instead of pissing your pants, it gives a pretty random debuff to the player. We are fairly certain that the mod developer put a blindfold on and threw a dart at a list of words for what fear will affect. And it landed on... Fall damage. Ah uh, yes, fall damage is what fear will affect. And having done this, he must have screamed GENIUS before breaking a pool cue over his knee and running out the door. He was never seen again. Okay, so what fear does is it will multiply the amount of fall damage a player takes. For example, if you have fear 3, you will take 4.5 times normal fall damage. The exact equation is 1.5 times whatever level of fear you're at, but worry not. The mod developer, in his 
genius surpassing that of any great man that ever lived before him, had decided to make it an experimental feature that is disabled by default in the game. Yeah, he also decided fear two or higher will give the player a chance to randomly fail placing a block. Furthermore, Fear 3 has decided to give the player a random chance to fail using an item. Simply exquisite. Last but not least is Fear 4, which will give the player a random chance of opening their inventory. And I, myself, have only two more things to add on to this. Number one, <laughs> milk of course does not work here. Don't even ask. Two, there should be a fear level 5, where you have a chance of killing yourself from fear whenever you press a button. I think that'll be a very fine addition to the mod. Okay, Call of the Hive, the signature effect of this mod. It is the primary way parasites propagate infection. It cannot be removed by milk and has three levels of potency. Level 1 does nothing. Level 2, the mob shall be infected and will pretend to be normal while disguised. It will continue to infect nearby mobs, however the infected mob takes heavy damage. It will shed its skin and turn into an incomplete form, attacking the target responsible. Level 3 is identical to 2, but it will reset the timer when it's expired. What this means is it will spread infinitely as long as an infected mob remains alive. Call of the Hive can be obtained in many different ways. Being near a mob with Call of the Hive 2 or 3, being near residue, touching a buglin, or getting attacked by any parasite in the game. Call off the hounds and call off the hive. It's time for camouflage. Now, this effect essentially does nothing for you. You can't hide from any parasites. They will still rip your nuts off, but what Camouflage does is give you a 70% chance to not get called to hide. This is per tick, by the way, so you will just get it eventually anyways. And you might as well be saying to yourself, well, it must last a long time and be very easy to obtain, right? No, not at all. Now, according to the wiki, 1. Players cannot get it. It is only obtained by mobs. 2. The only way to obtain this is to feed said mob a golden apple or carrot. And last but not least, 3. The golden apple gives camo for 5 minutes, and the carrot only gives it for 2 minutes and 30 seconds. So remember kiddos, Always feed your cow a golden apple when the parasites come through cheeks. So when you die, for five minutes, maybe your cow will be safe from infection, or not. Either way, your dreams are absolutely crushed in the end. Hide under the covers and tell your boyfriend to get the fuck out of the closet. It's time to talk about corrosion. Corrosion is short but sweet. Only a few parasites even inflict this effect, so you should be very thankful for that. This effect will deal damage to your armor over time, much like poison does to hit points. Milk will, of course, not help you at all. And each piece of armor you wear will take 5 durability damage every second while you have this effect. The only parasites that have this effect are ranged parasites, such as the Sentry and Vigilante. So say goodbye to your dreams, your armor, and your god, for they will all be corroded away in due time. Alright, now that my nipple tassels have melted away, let's continue on. It's time to talk about D-Bar. This right here is what we call a stopgap measure. This effect is not possible for players to get, but whenever you kill a parasite, it takes away evolution points from the overall biomass. However, if they have D-Bar, it will take no points away. Now the creatures that have D-Bar are any parasites that are spawned by primitive or adapted summoners, or other spawners, such as beckons and overseers. Oh, and don't worry, even the dispatcher will give this effect. So while you're killing hordes of enemies, just remember it does absolutely nothing and the biomass will continue to grow a lot. Ah uh, yes, the evolution system. We'll go over that at a later date. Three, two, one, go. 
Lock me in a cellar and bash a glass bottle over my head. We shall move on to Foster. So I just want to point out on the wiki, the colony carrier is supposed to inflict this, but I don't believe that. Now imagine this for a moment. You're in the middle of a jungle killing a colony carrier, and it starts adapting to each of your abilities. Bullets, explosives, magic, pleading and begging. It becomes immune to all damage you have to dish out. You then run away and eventually come back upon it a few days later. Yeah, it's immune to everything now in the game, and you just stare at it for clicking the quick game button, uninstalling the mod, tightly wrapping your PC in duct tape, and frisbeeing it off your local cliff of death. And that's what this effect does. The new parasite with this ability will slowly grow immune to whatever it gets hit with. So whether you're fighting it or not, it's just sitting there getting stronger like a Dragon Ball character. Alright, alright. Pour some carrot juice into my eyes until I have heightened senses. It's time to talk about, you guessed it, heightened senses. Allegedly only one mob has this, and that'd be the Dispatcher. Now, let's be real here, this effect does exactly what it sounds like. Parasites will see you from farther away. But by how much? You may ask the mod developer. No, you really should ask him. He didn't want to tell anybody. Check out the wiki. Come on, do it. Tell me the difference besides the amount of time in each version of it. Do it. Tell me! Tell me! I'm not encouraged the harassment of the creator of this mod or the custodians of the wiki, as dusty as both of them may be. Next up is the Hero of Time, Link. This effect is carried by colony carriers and dispatchers. What this effect does is add to the global adaptation of parasites, even for those not near a colony. A fraction of the adaptation of any damage dealt to a linked parasite will contribute to the adaptation of all other parasites within the global pool of the link effects. There is absolutely no rest for the wicked here. If you ever manage to reach this point in the game, just know that your continued struggle fuels the fires of more bullshit enemies. Hiltacular. Kilimanjaro. Kilianair. On to the next status effect, and my favorite weapon in Halo, the Needler. Now what Needler does is nothing. Not on its own, at least. If you're able to get Needler up to Amplifier 7, which all of them stack so it's not hard to do, you can remove 40% of a target's health in the snap of your fingers. This effect is obtained by orbs that drop from parasites specifically from adapted and pure parasites, alongside suckers. And remember, this effect stacks. If you touch any of these orbs, it will multiply the effect, and when it reaches 7, it'll do the damage. So, adapted parasites will drop an orb that flex Needler 3 for 30 seconds. Pure parasites drop Needler 4 for the same amount of time. And lastly, Suckers drop Needler 5, so all you need to do, not even counting any of the parasites hitting you, is touch 2 or 3 orbs within 30 seconds and you'll instantly lose 40% of your health. Combo that with parasites that can already one-shot you. While you're rolling around in the bed of nails and broken glass, you can imagine how much fun it is. And do I even need to say it? That's right, kiddos. Melk doesn't do jack shit for you either. Okay, I'm not even gonna make a joke about this one. This effect has a special place in hell waiting for it. Viral. What this does is make any creature inflicted with it take additional damage whenever they get hurt. The math equation is what is currently on screen. It is an amplifier, aka viral level, times damage received, times 0.5. So for instance, if you take 4 damage and have Viral 3, you'll actually take 10 damage. Or if you take 12 damage and have Viral 5, you'll take 42 damage. 
You can pour that shit down the drain. You know milk doesn't work on anything. That's right, we lied. All those hours of milking those poor bastard child cows wasted. Have fun with no method of combating all of these debuffs. All right, now you're a smart cookie. You may think that because this ability is very strong, that not many creatures have this. You'd be wrong. Any enemy that is tinted green has the viral effect. There are also creatures that will automatically use it anyways, such as carriers, the gnat, and assimilated ender dragon, which one shots you anyway, so who cares at this point? Speaking of carriers, by the way, their viral is special and lasts for 20 seconds. So it is conceivably possible that you get blown up by multiple different carriers before you die. And just for a split second, you will have Viral 24. An express ticket to hell, especially if an assimilated pig decides to come bite your ankle on top of that. Oh yeah, did we forget to mention that this shit stacks? Ooh, sorry bud. With the damage equation we talked about before, say it with me kids. The pig does 7 damage times viral 24 times 0 0.5 equals 42 hearts of damage from one pig bite. How absolutely beautiful I am about to cry. Break my bones until they're powdered milk. It's time to talk about the amalleable effect. Finally, something to fight back against the parasite horde. This effect will disable a parasite's ability to adapt to damage. That sounds great, right? You may ask, how do I obtain this miracle ability? Well, you don't. The mod developer merely programmed it into the game. There's not a single legitimate way to attain this ability. How wonderful! It seems as though the developer likes to tease a fighting chance more than actually giving the players a fighting chance in his own mod. Strange. Gee willy, I hope it's not intentional. It only happens all the time within this mod. Flip those tables and sign those divorce papers, people. It's time to talk about Rage. So Rage can stack up to level 2. When a Parasite is inflicted with Rage, their damage and speed will both be increased by 10%, along with any abilities of theirs having a reduced cooldown. Any enraged Parasites will signify this with black smoke or black particles. Parasites can be enraged in any number of ways, such as cutting off a limb, a marauder using its ability, hitting a parasite's damage cap, remember that by the way, literally just being near a purifier block, and decreasing the parasite's evolutionary phase. Also, I would like to point out the fact that for those last two, the duration is apparently unknown. Wow, this is great. It's like the mod developer just doesn't care to talk about the mod he's making. Why? I don't know. Alright, day 24. Morale is at an all-time low. The stores of meth lace chocolate are running dangerously low. And my friend Ian here has been eyeing my leg for the past several hours. Now that the test is still concluded. But I can't bear to watch the screen anymore. I would just like to thank everyone. No! Not my chocolate! I would like to thank everyone for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. For now though, I'm going to use his crowbar in this man's spine to try and pry open the door. Alright, we'd like to take time out of this video to do something special. We, we did in the last video. A shout out of our favorite comment. Yeah, our boy... Whatever the hell that name is. I suscrit 4678 I had a question for us. How much do you pay your subjects? Can I become one? Why yes? Yes of course you can become one. You pay in bragging rights, food, and shelter. No need to look for us though. We'll come find you. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's video.